Hi, we're going to present our paper, Learning for the Rise of China, Exploring the Uses and Gratifications of State-Owned Platforms. In March 2019, surpassing all popular social media like WeChat and TikTok, the most downloaded application of the month in Apple's App Store in China was Xuexi Xiangguo, meaning Learning for the Rise of China. Overall, Xuexi is a state-owned online platform for political communication. When a user opens the app, they will first see official news. Users can access MOOCs, mainstream movies, and TV shows. The key feature of Xuexi is its study point system that quantifies users' activities on the platform. Xuexi also employs a gamified ranking mechanism and leaderboard. However, little was known about individual situated motivations for using this state-owned platform. The questions we ask are, what motivates people to engage with Xuexi? What impacts people's use and adoption of the system? To answer these questions, we conducted semi-structured interviews with 28 active users of Xuexi in two top-tier cities in China. Before jumping into the results, we want to first make sense of who Xuexi's target populations are. Different from the Western binary state-society dichotomy, the Chinese political system is much more complicated and contested. Following Philip Huang's definition, we argue that Xuexi's target populations are individuals in the third realm that acts as an intermediary between the central state and the general public. As such, Xuexi's target populations tend to have higher socio-political status, higher trust in the government compared to the general public, and they are influenced by both the state power from the top and the societal power from the bottom. With this in mind, we identified seven key uses and gratifications of adapting Xuexi, including compliance, self-status seeking, general information seeking, job support, entertainment, emotional commitment arise from their attachment to the national identity and history, and finally, learning. We also identified three influencing factors of these uses and gratifications, including users' perceived surveillance on their use, their professional identity, and their organization's norms and position in the political structure. Taken together, our results illustrate how Xuexi is changing the landscape of political communication and governance in China. First, our results suggest the extension of state surveillance into the space of political communication and individuals' political involvement and intake of official information. Such data could be utilized in guiding and monitoring the opinion of the key players that connect the public and the state, if not every single citizen. Second, our results showed patriotism as the use and gratification unique to state-owned platforms. On the one hand, we find that such patriotic feeling is deeply seated in individuals' emotions and their attachment to the country. On the other hand, such feelings can be understood as top-down engineering to maintain the social and political stability. Although these two perspectives seem contradictory, we see them both embodied in individuals' use of Xuexi and how the use of Xuexi was reinforcing both narratives. Finally, offering seemingly heterogeneous apolitical content. This way, the platform can support users' varied information curation needs and foster their stickiness to the platform so that Xuexi's major goal of guiding and supervising public opinion as an official media outlet is fulfilled. Together, our study on Xuexi offers a different perspective of political communication compared to the Western model that focuses on civic participation and democratic deliberation. Our work highlights that Future CSCW research should critically recognize and embrace the plurality of political narratives based on the specific context of varying societies and target populations. Thank you very much.